Hello, it's so good to be with you today. I appreciate you joining me for this week's uh, podcast on leadership. Today, I want to talk to you about doing a diagnostic checkup on yourself, your business, your life, your family, your relationships, whatever the case is. You know, I uh, likened this in many, many ways to an experience that I had a number of years ago. I, I play golf. I enjoy the game. I do. I love the game because you can never really master it. You play it. Some days you have days where you can't, you can't miss anything. It's beautiful. And then there are some days when you can't make anything. Everything is bad. And I was going through a season a number of years ago, short season, but it was a season to where everything that I hit was terrible. It was just, it, it wasn't really a slice I just knew when I hit it, I ended up in the woods. It was more than a slice. It was borderline on a shank. It was just, it was, it was just, it was just awful. Uh, made the game very difficult. I was so discouraged, and uh, so I took a friend of mine with me, and we went to visit someone that was a professional. He was a trainer, professional trainer for professional golfers. And uh, so I kind of explained the problem, and he was very nice. And he said, "Well, let's let's look at your swing." So I sat there and kind of, of course, I was even embarrassed to do that because it just, I mean, it was off and it was terrible. I'm just telling you. And he sat there and he, he looked at me and he said, okay, here's what I see. This is what you're doing. And my surprise, to, my, my response was even a surprise to me because I said, no, I'm, I'm not doing that. Now, what that said was, I was doing something that was producing a result that I couldn't see myself, even to the point that I was in denial that I was even doing it. He had to bring this friend that was with me. He said, come here. He said, tell him this is what he's doing. And so she said, yeah, that's, that's what you're doing. See, I couldn't see it. Many times we have things in our life where we're doing things that we can't see that we're doing it. All we know is we're in the trees. All we know is we're, we're, we're not getting the results that we want. So what we have to do is to occasionally do a diagnostic checkup. And I think that's so healthy for everything that you do. If things are not going right, if things are falling apart, your business is not succeeding, your, your spiritual life is not succeeding, your relationships, your marriage, whatever the case is, there are times when you need to sit down and do a diagnostic checkup, just kind of to analyze what's happening in my life and figure out what it is that I'm doing that's producing that results and what to do about it. You know, it's kind of investigating these symptomatic problems that come up in my life that's not producing the results that I want. So it's a diagnostic checkup, okay? It's required from time to time to determine the problems that we don't see. Do you have problems that you don't see? No, let me put it this way. Are you having results that you don't want? You're doing something. You think I'm pulling all the right triggers. I'm doing all the right things, but I'm not getting the results that I want. Well, that's that's kind of what we're doing. Uh, and it becomes kind of a checklist to help us get on track. I'm, I'm thinking of the story of Nehemiah. The Bible talked about him. Uh, he was a good example of this. He was going to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And the first trip that he made, he went to Jerusalem to see and to evaluate the condition of the city. And, and he saw the city that the walls were broken down. So first thing that he did was, is he recognized the problem. And then he did an evaluation to see how severe the problem was. And then after that, he started to work on it. That was a diagnostic checkup, if I can say that right. Now, we have self-evaluations that are very healthy for us. Sometimes we need to look at ourselves and truly be honest with ourselves. We need to be brutally honest with ourselves and lovingly honest with one another. I mean, a lot of people, they say, tell me the truth, be honest with me. Well, many times they don't mean that because if you tell them the truth, then you cause offense. But we do have to come to the place, at least with ourselves, that we're being very honest because a lot of people, they don't like that. Sometimes we don't like it ourselves. Maybe it's pride, maybe it's insecurity. But the fact is, we need to be able to look at ourselves if we're truly going to change what we're doing if it's not working. 
I have a dear friend of mine. His name is Dr. Thomas Harrison, and just one of the greatest and sharpest guys you'll ever meet in your entire life. And he used to be part of a group that would go, and they were what they would call a secret church shopper. They would go in for churches, and basically they would go in as a visitor. They would go in. They would be welcomed. They would sit through the service. They would uh, then get up at the end of the service, and they would leave. Then they would turn a report in to the pastors or the leaders to say, this is what happened to me. This was what I what happened to me in the parking lot. This is what happened to me as I came in. This was the condition conditions that I found in the restrooms. This was the hospitality situation. And and so what he was doing is, is he was trying to reveal the things that was hindering their growth that they didn't see. Do you know something? You can do something wrong long enough until you don't see it anymore. You can take a box and put it in your living room. And although it may be completely out of place there, you leave it long enough, you'll get to the place that you don't see it anymore. And, and, and that's really the way a lot of our habits begin to be developed. You know, first we just starting with it, you know, it becomes kind of a habit, and then pretty soon it becomes a lifestyle to us. And so you've got to occasionally be able to look at the condition of your life if you're wanting to change, you may have to get some help. You know, there are companies that pay a lot of money to have someone come in and sharpen them, to tell them, this is critique them. This is what you need to do to be better. I, I remember one of the some of the best advice that I ever got when I started in ministry. I was 17 years old and my father spoke to me. And he said something I've never forgotten and I've applied it to this day. He said, son, always be open to constructive criticism or you'll never grow. Now, I'm not talking about destructive criticism. Destructive criticism is I don't like you and nothing you can do about it. But constructive, if, if I'm doing something, then I need to, be, to realize that it's there, to acknowledge it's there, and then to make changes to begin to, to, uh, change, to, to fix that. So you can do a self-evaluation. You can get help from somebody else or you can do a self-evaluation. I have what I'm calling just a six-step uh, diagnostic that I want to just lead you through, <coughs> excuse me, that I want you to apply to your life, okay? This is six steps. Number one is recognition. Number one, recognition. Get help if necessary. But the thing is, you need to do whatever you can to identify, to recognize that there's something. Attend leadership seminars, get outside your environment, see what other people are doing, keep fresh input. But you need to recognize this is, this is good, but there's something wrong. There's something missing. You got to recognize that. So that's number one, recognition. Number two, evaluation. Okay. How severe is it? Wow. How severe is it? Like I said, be brutally honest with yourself, lovingly honest with someone else, okay? Write down every negative thing that is spoken, even if it's not true. Because sometimes someone might be saying something that comes across as criticism to us, and so we just shut it off. But is it possible that part of what they're saying could be true? So I need to evaluate. So I, I, I've got to remember, even if it's not true to that person, it may be true. Listen, perception may not be reality, but it's reality to the person that's perceiving it. And if that person's important to you, then you want to make sure that that person's perception is what you want. And if you're doing something, even if you don't mean to, that that's causing this perception, you need to analyze that. And, and make some changes because it's affected a lot of us. And, and, and so what we need to do is we say, has this affected me? This thing that I'm seeing right now, this evaluation, has it affected me? Has it hurt me? And to say, what can be done about it? So that's done in my evaluation. Number three, I'm setting my objectives and I'm setting my goals because now I've looked at this thing, I've recognized it, I've evaluated it, now I'm needing to set the objectives and the goals. Here's my plan. Number four, start making changes and work the plan. Sometimes you can't make all the changes immediately. 
but begin to move things in that direction. Start making the changes and work the plan. See, sometimes you might find that you've got to make changes. It takes different people or changes in old people to help you get out of the rut you've been in and take you to the next level that you're wanting to go to, okay? So what you're doing there is you're starting, number four, you're, you're, you're starting to make those changes. You're working the plan. Now, once that's done, what's number five? Number five is reevaluate again. I'm looking at the thing and I'm reevaluating that again. Are the changes working for me? Are they making a difference? And then the final one is number six, remodify your plans based on that evaluation. Don't, don't get stuck and say, this is the way it's always got to be. The 10 commandments were the only thing that was set in stone. You know what that means? You got to be flexible. If you're wanting to begin to move forward with the things in your life, some because sometimes we, we have, if I could take you back to the golf analogy, we have what is called muscle memory. And so what, what that means is, is I'm so used to my swing being in a certain way that I'll do it unconsciously. I'll do it and don't even realize it. It's muscle memory. And so what you've got to do many times, I think it was Tiger Woods or somebody like, I think it was Tiger Woods. He had to, because of his age, he couldn't bend like a pretzel anymore. And he was having to make an adjustment in his swing. And as a result, he had to literally take a year, a season off of golf as far as being in tournaments because he had, he had so built in muscle memory that he had to change that. It took time. So you have to be flexible and you have to understand that there are things in your life that need to be changed and, and you can't always change them immediately. Sometimes you have to work it and over a period of time, move things forward. You don't turn a ship on a dime. What you sometimes have to do is start turning it. I recognize there's a problem and so I can't make the changes today. As a matter of fact, if you, if you make changes too quickly, you will alienate people that are connected to you. You don't want to do that. Changes that are made too quickly, to me, that can become destructive. What you're going to have to do is evaluate where you are and begin to slowly make those changes to take you where you want to be. And be, be flexible. See, principles don't change, but application does. That doesn't mean because you're changing that somehow you're losing uh, uh, your identity of who you are. Principles don't change. Your values are going to change, but the application of what you do is going to change. What works 10 years ago may not work today. So you've got to be open to do things maybe that you've never done, or maybe look at things the way you've never looked at it before. So we evaluate our presentation, we evaluate our application, and then we make the changes based on that. And we must continually evaluate the obstacles between us and the people that we're trying to influence or trying to draw. We've got to evaluate those things because if we don't, we'll be alienated and we won't know why. We're just going to know that we're in the trees. We're just going to know that no matter what I do is shanking off here and I can't see what I'm doing wrong. So these evaluations about yourself are essential and you need to every year, you need to calendar it if you have to, but you need to sit down and look at what you're doing and say, is this the results that I'm wanting? And if not, don't be full of pride. Say, what am I doing that might be wrong? Start your evaluation with you, okay? Especially if you're in that leadership position, start your evaluation with you. You know, it's kind of like the Bible says, you know, I've heard people say, well, nobody likes me. Well, the Bible says if a person wants to have friends, he must show himself friendly. It's possible they don't have any friends because they're not very friendly. I mean, that all, and what, what does that call for? It, an evaluation about yourself. It's a diagnostic evaluation about yourself. So that's the plan today. And I want you to take this to heart because it's my desire to see you move to the next level of performance and of results. That's what I want to see you do. And I believe God's got great plans for you. I sure love and appreciate you guys. If you would like some more information, you can go to my website, jerryedmond.com. I've got a ton of resources there. 
that I know will be a blessing to you. And I hope I can help you in whatever way that you, that, that you have need of. Okay. Love you guys. And I'm looking forward to see you in the next podcast. So success is in front of you. Come on, let's go for it. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.